donc que ça c'est en réalité vraiment là. J'ai pas la. Ah, tu peux, tu peux. Mais si j'ai eu des condensations of a cool, of a large course, this is a half for one third of my course in Florence. So actually I'm going very quick through the, the topics. And if you are interested, there is a nice book, uh, Introduction to Dynamical System and Chaos by Stephen Strogatz. I leave you on the notes, and uh, which is very nice. Strogatz is a mathematician, not a physicist, but actually he is very, very nice person. There is also a, a series of videos by him, and essentially this is this follows uh, this uh, course. So the idea is to try to summarize. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, because you are in just in front of the camera, <laughs> not speaking. Before. And uh, try to summarize uh, the results of studying, uh, qualitative studying of the radical system. I mean, qualitative, I mean, we do not care about solving uh, the differential equation, not finding any trajectory, but studying uh, the structural modification of the solution, I mean, bifurcation. When a fixed point is stable and becomes unstable, when a limit cycle appears, what kind of attractors can be present in a given dynamics? So this is qualitative analysis of the rental system. So let's start with a very simple one dimensional, I mean one equation, one variable, um, and problem. For instance, this one x dot equals sine sinus of x. Okay, you can solve this using Bernoulli <laughs> functions, uh, no, Bernoulli, or uh, order, I don't, I don't remember. But uh, you are not interested in this. You're interested in saying, okay, this equation in the long time limit has a fixed points or some other, other kinds of uh, attractors. And so you can simply draw the sinus of x. No, this is x, and this is the sinus of x. And this is x dot. Okay, clearly, when sinus of x is larger than zero, x dot is positive. And so it means that x increases. So you can draw an arrow every time the sinus of x is positive. An arrow through right. And you have to draw an arrow through le to left every time sinus is negative. So you see that there are points where you have two converging arrows. These are the stable fixed points. While you have points where you have uh, uh, arrows that go away from that point. Yeah, these are unstable fixed points. So this is the idea of a qualitative analysis of a differential equation. We are interested in draws, drawings like this. Okay, then you can derive the linear stability of these points approximating the equation, developing it, the, this part around these points. No? And this is, a, uh, no? you see for instance, uh, you, there are, you approximate, this is a fixed point. Okay, the fixed point is given by f of x equal to x. Uh, it is a fixed point if this, so if this is zero, no, excuse me, this was for math. It is a fixed point where this is zero for the continuous equations. Yeah. Hmm? And uh, is this stable or unstable? Here yeah, you can develop around the fixed point, for instance this one, uh, and you see that uh, in the linear approximation the stability is given by the derivative of the function in this point. Clearly, if the derivative is positive, you have an unstable fixed point. If the derivative is negative, you have a stable fixed point. Hmm? Okay? And, uh, <clears throat> and, and uh, you can also uh, study the linear approximation, and you see that in this case, you have an exponential uh, uh, behavior near the fixed point. Okay. Either exponentially diverge or exponentially converge <laughs> to the fixed point. 
And uh, so, for instance, you can have uh, several examples that I give you for exercise, so you can study this, so you can study this. There are several techniques and so on. And um, <coughs> for instance, this is uh, the same equation that we had before, <coughs> but now continues uh, in time. It is called the logistic <coughs> equation. Yeah? And uh, again, you draw the, the parabola like we have been, done before, but now this continues, so you have to apply this kind of analysis. So here, in this part, it is expanding, in this part it is contracting, so you see that the, for these values of the, of the parameters, you have a you know, stable fixed point and a stable fixed point here. With the exponential behavior, here starts like an exponential, and then goes to this like another exponential. Hmm? This is a, a diverging exponential. So, I mean, you leave uh, the unstable fixed point exponentially fast. Then, at the, when you are near the stable fixed point, you are approaching uh, with an exponential convergence. Okay, now let's go to bifurcation. So, I mean, all these equations, uh, as we have seen before, have some parameters. For instance, R here. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Now, what is it? What I am interested in is not uh, finding the solution, but uh, uh, understanding what happens to the solutions when I change some parameter. Hmm? For instance, uh, and I clearly I, I start giving names to this kind of bifurcations. For instance, let's take this uh, very simple equation. I have a parabola here. So it has a fixed point uh, and an unstable fixed point. But then I move this parabola because uh, for my, uh, I, have to, I don't want to change this parameter. And you see what happens. When you increase a from less than 0 to uh, larger than 0, you have the, uh, the, the, two fix, the two fixed points, the stable and unstable, that join together. Hmm? And then they, then they disappear. Mm -hmm. So here you are going to infinite. Mm -hmm. While here you are going to this point. Is, so this is the basin of attraction of this point. Here you go to infinity. But at a certain point, the basin of attraction disappears. And you are going to infinite. Oh, clearly. It means that you are going outside what is represented by this equation in reality. Eh? You remember that you are always dealing with a model of a small part of a system. Okay, maybe this is maybe accurate for the behavior near this fixed point, then maybe outside can be completely different. Mm -hmm. And this is called the sudden node bifurcation uh, for some historical reason. And uh, so this is, uh, again, the graphs of the bifurcation as we did before. But now I'm plotting it. Instead of plotting this, which is, I, I need uh, at least uh, three drawings, uh, I try to condense the whole behavior in a single graph. How? Here I plot uh, the, my parameter, and here the fixed points, as we did before for the logistic map. So you see what happens. Here I have uh, a stable fixed point and an unstable fixed point for A less than zero. The two points uh, collab uh, so join together or collapse here for A equals zero. And then only uh, then I have no more uh, points, uh, fixed points, so I have just uh, a flux to infinity. So this is a, what is called a bifurcation diagram or a bifurcation graph. Yeah? Clearly, it, the, the same bifurcation can happen in a very different way. For instance, this one, I'm studying this, uh, you know, instead of plotting this, uh, I can separate, so since I'm interested in the point x dot equal to zero, I can uh, try to plot, uh, to, to make a different diagram. Instead of plotting this, that may be difficult, uh, I can plot the uh, x, the minus x, which is a constant, uh, and look for the intersection of these uh, 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 set of uh, um, lines uh, that, uh, that move. And again, you have the same description now in a different uh, picture. 
Here you have two fixed points, then they collapse and they finally disappear. But the bifurcation diagram is the same. Okay, it is not centered on zero and so on, but essentially it has the same bifurcation diagram as before. Okay, so another name is the transcritical bifurcation. In this case, you see now the parameter multiplies x and x instead of just being a constant. But you, you don't need to take, take notes. I leave you everything, and the, 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 the book is easy to find and the web. And uh, in this case, for instance, you see, changing the parameter, you have this behavior here. And because uh, you always have the solution x equal to 0, <coughs> so 0 is always a fixed point. Uh, what happens is that it becomes from it changes from from stable to unstable, and in this graph you see what happens. There is a stable fixed point and then a stable one that collides with it and it changes the character. Here you don't see, but it is dotted. <coughs> so essentially, they cross together and they change the stability one to another. So you have this feature. And you, and you call this a transcriptive habifurcation. So that is that uh, when you have this picture maybe generated by a computer, you say, okay, here is a sudden non bifurcation, here is a transcriptive habifurcation, here is a, another kind of bifurcation, and so on. <coughs> okay. For example, there are, oh, now I, I have to skip because there are 100 slides here, so I want to, to, be, to stay in the day. But uh, this is a good representation of, of what happens uh, on a laser, you can follow the description of the slides. What happens is, oh, there is a description. This is also in the book uh, by Strogatz. Essentially, in the laser, you expect something like this. This is uh, the power of the pump that you put that you put into the laser, and you expect something like this. If you don't put enough power, the laser stay uh, without emitting anything. At a certain point, uh, no, he starts emitting. Okay? So, here yeah, he could say also here, but it's unstable. So, any fluctuations in the laser due to the, uh, to the mechanism of stimulated emission brings uh, to the production of a laser beam. So, it is very, very simple <coughs> that uh, say, explains why there is a threshold for uh, starting a laser. Why well, you don't have this threshold, for instance, for a, a standard uh, light? Huh? For a resistance, you have a linear law. So you put a, a small amount of energy, you have a small amount of light. You put more energy, you have a more amount of light. While here you have a, a nonlinear equation, and then it, it appears a threshold. And so this is a simple model for explaining why there is a threshold for starting uh, emitting light. Uh, another one uh, <coughs> are magnetic system, uh, the one that we have seen before can be approximated not near the transition but far from the transition from an equation like this. Uh, again, uh, you, you have uh, this kind of behavior here. So you see now you have this cubic term and then this is a linear term as before multiplied by a parameter. Here you can rescale a. Yeah. And uh, now, since you have now this cubic term here, you have a different uh, bifurcation, which is called the pitchfork bifurcation, which goes like this. Now you have a, a cubic uh, curve instead of just a parabola. And you always have, uh, it is similar to the previous one, because you always have the solution x equal to 0. But now you have two other points and not just one that collides with this. You see now what happens. They go, they go near and near and near, they collide. No? And, uh, and one, just one remains. So in this case you have two stable fixed points that collide with the unstable one. Essentially, they, you may count. One of these disappears with this, like uh, in the saddle node bifurcation, and only a stable one remains. And clearly, it has to do with some topology of these uh, fixed points and so on. Actually, you can see what happens 
you can see that this <coughs> is just uh, the sum of the transcritical and the saddle of the bifurcation in this way. Uh, you, you can alter the equation by adding a constant, which is kept fixed, no? like this. And you see what happens. Instead of uh, having uh, the collapse of the two fixed points at the same point, one collapses before the other arrives uh, near there. And so actually, you have uh, this uh, saddle node bifurcation, and this is simply staying here. If you make this smaller and smaller and smaller, you have this point that goes uh, up and this goes down. And finally, they join and give origin to this. So actually, this is a given the like one fixed point that stays essentially there, and the saddle node bifurcation that occurs uh, by chance in the same uh, position. And uh, uh, what is uh, interesting here is that uh, now suppose that uh, you have a really a knob that allows you to, to turn uh, uh, the parameter uh, A. Now, and suppose you start here because it is stable. Hmm? Now you turn your knob, for instance, the temperature. You go here, you, have, you see a sudden transition here. Then you want to come back, but you are, you are not able to, to come back to here. No? So you see that you cannot come back to here. You have to prepare the system in other ways for going here, because it is not reachable, this part here. Yeah? Which is a, a thing that happens. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, I'll show you... I, I can show you just now this. I, I have built uh, this uh, system here. Uh, you can build also. I have not brought it here. You have uh, a, a circle. I've taken uh, um, one of these things that you find in the bathroom, uh, circular, uh, say, uh, how do you say in English, the um, word? The drying uh, piece uh, of, of uh, tissue the, um, for, for the drying of uh, hands. Uh, a serviette in, in English? Uh, uh, towels. 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 Okay. Uh, <laughs> the hand, uh, hand being towels, uh, no, the, the, the plate, where to put the towels uh, in ah, the bathroom. Okay. There are some of them are circular. Mm -hmm. So I bought one of these, uh, this one. And then I put uh, uh, here it is uh, a knot, uh, hmm? a heavy and heavy cursor that can go in this uh, in this uh, on this circle here. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So clearly, and here is a spring, mm -hmm. a rubber band. Then what happens if uh, there is all, all the analysis that you can do? Essentially, this is the scheme. So this can move freely here. Hmm? And this is the rubber band. And uh, I can say here you can make, uh, you can pull the rubber band more or less. So clearly, if the parameter is essentially the, the, the length of the rubber band uh, when it is at rest. So how, many, how much you pull uh, the rubber band. Okay? So clearly, if the rubber band is uh, um, is uh, very long, uh, there is only stable position is here. Hmm? Mm -hmm. But if it is strong enough, uh, actually there are two positions here and this becomes unstable. Now suppose you, you pull very hard, uh, no? mm -hmm. you, clearly it can stay there, it is exactly there, but then it goes from one side to another. So you have, you have this kind of uh, bifurcation. Now, if you tilt this, you have this kind of bifurcation. Because suppose you start here with a very short rubber band. Then you lose it, and, and so your cursor goes here. And then you start pulling again. It always goes this, this, this way, and never comes back to this way. No, because, you see, the, the, the rubber is pulling in this direction here, so here it goes in this way. 
Mm. So you you have you start here, you go say up to here, then it suddenly it jumps here or even over here. Then you start pulling again and you go this way. So this is a according to if it is a, in the a vertical position or slightly tilted, you have either a pitchfork bifurcation or a, 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 an imperfect bifurcation. Okay, so the, now you can do the same uh, changing the sign into this uh, cubic term. <coughs> And uh, this, this was uh, what you had seen, huh? pitchfork bifurcation and imperfect bifurcation. Now, if you change the sign of this cubic term, <coughs> you have a, again a pitch bifurcation, but everything is reversed. So you have a, an unstable fixed point that becomes stable, and two unstable fixed point goes like this, like this. No? Mm? Which is interesting, but uh, physically this is uh, rather in improbable because, uh, as I said, uh, this is a model of a limited amount of, uh, of the, your uh, zone. Generally, it, got, it does, does not go to infinity, but is bounded by something. So actually, what uh, you do is to, uh, to add, uh, say, a bounding uh, potential here. So you have it. Locally, you have this part here, but uh, you have something that keeps the system uh, from going to infinity. And this is an interesting uh, uh, model because uh, it is uh, actually what happens in magnetization. And uh, you see here what happens. For uh, A less than zero, you have this picture, so you have two stable fixed points and a stable fixed point. When uh, A less than one, zero if you want to put the, all this together. And uh, then it appears another fixed point here, and two fixed points, you know? and uh, at the end these two fixed points, uh, unstable fixed points, collide with the stable ones, uh, and they disappear. So this is a, a subtle non bifurcation. Hmm? So this is what happens uh, in a magnetic system, uh, because uh, like an easy model that we have seen. Suppose this is the temperature. Hmm? Mm -hmm. High temperature, only one stable fixed point, all disorder in the system, magnetization equal to zero. We are here. Mm -hmm. Hmm? We lower the temperature. Hmm? At a certain point, uh, this loses stability, and uh, you have a jump uh, to either magnetization from one side, or magnetization to the other side. Hmm? Then you start increasing again the temperature, and what generally happens, for instance, uh, with the with the first of the first transition, water boiling, is that you go more farther than this point, uh, where you have uh, this transition. So you have an hysteresis cycle here. Which is uh, happen, which is observed in many systems, uh, like for instance, uh, uh, boiling waters, but also a, a lot of material. When you stretch them, they do not, not come back exactly to the same form. You have to com to compress it, uh, and so on. And so, this is a very simple model that explains how hysteresis cycles can happen, and you can recognize what happens. Here, there are two subtle node bifurcations. And here you have a, an inverse uh, trans uh, pitchfork bifurcation. All together, gives, uh, this is called the subcritical pitchfork bifurcation. But again, no, the idea is to recognize uh, pieces of uh, what you have already studied. So the idea is to decompose uh, a complex behavior into species uh, that can be described uh, more no, using other uh, systems. Okay. If you are interested only in this, you can develop this and you obtain, uh, you can drop a lot of terms and obtain the previous uh, schematization. If you are interested here, you can again throw away this and you <laughs> observe uh, the simplest equation. But if you are interested in all of this, you have to keep 
put there. So we start as is, uh, okay, up to now we have studied the first order equations that uh, can be considered to be obtained by the Newton equation when you have uh, a damping term and uh, when uh, this damping is large enough uh, and then you have this. So essentially with this uh, one dimensional system you only expect exponential relaxation because the motion is essentially overdone. It is like a, a ball uh, falling in the fluid, a very uh, sticky fluid, so it goes, uh, it does not have oscillations essentially. So we skip uh, all this and uh, in order to have oscillation you need at least uh, two dimensional systems. So, I mean, you need at least a second order uh, <coughs> that you can write uh, as a system of two first order coupled equations. Eh? So you have to study this kind of systems here. Uh, okay, this is not very important. Uh, okay, now what kind of fixed point do you expect for this kind of equation? You remember, fixed points means uh, having uh, uh, these two derivatives equal to zero. Okay, first of all, the very, very simple case in which the system is completely separable. These are just two one-dimensional systems, not coupled together. So clearly, you can have divergence in one direction and divergence in the other direction, which is a star. I mean, this is an unstable fixed point in all directions. You can have a uh, stable fixed point in one direction and stable fixed point in another direction. And you have a well, no? completely stable fixed point. Or you can have an unstable fixed point in one direction and stable fixed point in the other direction. And this is a saddle because it is like having a ball on a saddle. No? Okay, but uh, clearly what happens in, in reality is that. Uh, you have a matrix which is not diagonal. So you can rewrite this system at least in a linear approximation using a matrix. And the matrix is not always diagonal, otherwise all mathematicians, mathematics departments could close. <laughs> in general, they are not diagonal. So you have to find the again values and the again vectors. And clearly, you can have, for instance, this is a sub or not. If we um, fix a point, uh, a sub of fixed point as in the, in the previous example, but now the directions are not, uh, say, on the axis they may be inclined. And uh, clearly, when you, you look for a given values, uh, you have to solve the quadratic equation. So you may have uh, uh, also uh, complex <coughs> again, again values. Complex and conjugated envelopes that you can represent using a polar representation of complex numbers. So you have a radius and uh, an angle. And uh, the, this is the origin of uh, another kind of fixed point which is not present in one dimensional system, which is the limit cycle. So the, the spiraling for the moment. Uh, the, okay, this is the, 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 the a cycle, say, not the, the cycle here. Hmm? It is like this. For instance, there is in the book uh, an example, Robert and Juliet. Uh, Juliet uh, is a typical uh, woman, so it's a fickle woman. So when he is loved, uh, she goes away, but uh, when uh, uh, Robert goes away, she comes back. Uh, while uh, Robert is a typical man, it's very simple, so one neuron. Uh, uh, behavior. <laughs> and so if you write down this, you find that the Juliet uh, uh, is a J. Okay, is a, has a, a, a negative coefficient with respect to the Romeo, or Romeo has a positive coefficient with respect to Juliet. <coughs> and so this gives origin to the, to the say, Shakespeare novel. <laughs> okay, uh, for instance, uh, we can study the pendulum, I'm going to skip this because it's just an exercise. And, I, and the, the pendulum has a, this phase, which is a, a partitioned into 
ellipses for a, for small oscillations is just a, not the pendulum that continues to oscillate. Clearly, this is the position and this is the velocity. So they are in opposition in quite a few of phases. So now when the position is less, it's the minimum velocity is at maximum and so on. No, when the, when the position is intermediate, velocity at the maximum, when the position is at the extreme, velocity is zero and so on. So you have these kind of, of uh, small oscillations, uh, but pendulum, for instance, has a transition to rotations, uh, which are these ones. In rotation, velocity always takes the same uh, value, I mean, angular velocity. Yeah? And so this is a kind of phase space, uh, but this is a very special phase space because it is typical of system where energy is conserved, where some conservation law. Now, the fact that uh, you have a lot of different trajectories because X trajectory has to stay on the variety that gives you the constancy of energy. If you add uh, a small dissipation, you, all uh, trajectories now start to collapse uh, clearly on the fixed point. But actually, okay, you can have uh, several examples uh, uh, for instance, a rabbit uh, ships, uh, which is that just uh, you, have, you take the logistic equation that you have seen before and you just add uh, a cross term that gives the competition between rabbits and sheep because both eats grass. So clearly, if, uh, if a sheep increases, uh, rabbits has to decrease and so on. Huh? But clearly, the cross term is proportional to both. Uh, because it is a kind of this is a this is a self competition. It is in rabbits against rabbits, and this is a sheep, sheep against sheep, mm -hmm. and this is the cross term, which is a rabbit against sheep and sheep against rabbits. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, in this case, uh, for instance, you can use uh, uh, several ways of, of uh, showing this. Uh, for instance, uh, in this case. Uh, I'm just plotting the vector field. I mean, in each point, I compute this. And I draw something which is proportional to this. A small arrow proportional to this. So it gives the tangent of the trajectory that would pass in this point. Or another thing that I can do, I can plot the location of x dot equal 0, x y equal, and y dot equal 0, which are these two curves. <laughs> so there are different ways of plotting this. And um, you see that in these dynamics, uh, you have uh, an unstable fixed point here. It is a saddle. Here, then, you can analyze this and you find uh, all the uh, any given value positive and any given value which is negative, and the two stable fixed and a completely unstable fixed point uh, here. These are two positive uh, again values, uh, and the two fixed point uh, which correspond either to extinction of <coughs> rabbits and to extinction of ships. If you uh, if you go to the material, uh, there is. Uh, a simulation of this uh, in um, using uh, I don't remember where it is uh, this so this is uh, just uh, rabbits uh, and then there is another with uh, ships and rabbits so the green uh, is the grass, and you don't see, but there are small rabbits going around. And uh, I may let me see if I can. Uh, maybe you can see what happens in a small portion of your system, and you see rabbits uh, passing. <coughs> And uh, eating uh, grass here. <coughs> so you can play with this and appreciate the fact that uh, uh, the, 
the differential equation does not capture completely the dynamics uh, of the real, uh, real spatial system. <laughs> sometimes uh, yes, and sometimes not. Depends uh, on the parameters. Okay, but uh, I leave you to play with uh, this uh, model. And there are another with the only rabbits or sheep, and uh, another with rabbit and sheep. Actually. Talking of uh, animals in English is very complex because uh, sheep does not take uh, the plural one sheep, two sheep, uh, like fish, while rabbits uh, take the <laughs> S. <laughs> 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 it is difficult to. Okay, <coughs> now in two dimensions, a new uh, attractor appears, which is a limit cycles, which is quite easy if you think uh, of uh, uh, what you, I've seen, we have seen that you can represent the, be the behavior of the linear approximation around the point using uh, the polar approximation uh, of the eigenvalues. No? So let's suppose that uh, you are near a point uh, and uh, you are representing the evolution here. Now, instead of having just a, a constant uh, a radius, uh, r dot equal zero, suppose that uh, the radius depends on some parameter, so it has some dynamics in the other dimension. The idea of a, a, a limit cycle is that you have a converging dynamics in the radial dimension, while you have almost free dynamics in the angular direction. So essentially, if you start with a, a larger point, a larger radius, you converge to a smaller one. If you start with a smaller radius, you converge to, to the, to the <coughs> one, no? and you, but you still continue to turn around. So you have a, a picture like this. So generally, well, I, as, as I show you in a moment, you will see limit cycle appear when a spiraling a fixed point loses its stability. So I shall show you in a moment. Clearly, in reality, if you perform some simulation and you plot the trajectories, you don't see really a circle. You see something uh, like this. Eh? This is the, for instance, uh, the Van der Poel uh, equation goes to you something like this. I mean, oscillations are the formula, but they are periodic. And uh, for instance, this is a an example that you can study. No? This is the sample model. So this is the vector field as before. These are the null clients. I mean, this equal to zero is this, and this equal to zero is this. And so clearly, this vector field on this line is vertical, and on this line is horizontal. And so you can either use the vector field, which is good when you use computers, or you can use a new client, uh, which is a good when you use a paper and pencils, and uh, discover that actually there is a, a limit cycle here. So you see, if I start here, I go towards the limit cycle. If I start here, I go towards the limit cycle. And now, you so first we study what kind of uh, attractors are there. And then we start as usual bifurcation. So how can one attractor pass to another attractor when I change my knob, no, my, my parameters? Clearly there are the same bifurcations as before, for instance, a subtle node bifurcation. These are the two new clients that uh, goes like there, like this. And so these are typical uh, uh, trajectories. So here, uh, this new client is a vertical one, this new client is a vertical one, so this goes here, this goes here, because it has to stay there. And so, these are the two fixed points that collapse and disappear. It is a classical subtle node bifurcation. We can have a transcritical bifurcation, which essentially, this new client becomes tangent and then goes at the opposite side, and so you have an exchange of identity of the two fixed points. 
we can have a pitchfork bifurcation in, we, in which you, you see there is a, the same fixed point that stays there and a couple of other appears uh, because uh, this uh, is going to uh, this neural line is going to intersect uh, one or three times the other <coughs> and finally we have uh, this new bifurcation which is called the Hopf bifurcation clearly because it was studied by Hopf for the first time <laughs> which is a, a spiral in a stable fixed point that it becomes unstable so instead of spiraling towards the fixed point it starts spiraling away from this fixed point and the limit cycle appears hmm? okay and uh, so if you if you look at polar coordinates it is like having this then it becomes like this hmm? first of, first of we have just a, a stable fixed point i mean it's, it's still a turning because a theta dot is a constant but first it, it goes like this and then it goes like this hmm? and uh, Clearly, these, uh, uh, it, it is very, the, the, the hop vocation is uh, actually very similar to what we have seen before. Because uh, if you think of, of looking only when uh, this trajectory intersects <coughs> my rod here, actually, when you have a stable fixed point, you have just one intersection. And when uh, there is a fixed point, uh, the hop, the limb cycle, you have a uh, two intersections with an unstable one. So it is a clinic similar to the pitchfork bifurcation. No? But why the pitchfork bifurcation has a only stable fixed point? Now we are going from one fixed point to a limit cycle. So again, you can have uh, the same names for the hop bifurcation that we have uh, we had for the, for the subcritical bifurcation. It's a subcritical pitchfork bifurcation. Ah, and this is interesting because uh, actually it behaves uh, very similar to what uh, we have seen for the pitch or bifurcation. This point, uh, instead of losing its stability at the moment that the limit cycle appears, uh, continues to have the stability even when the limit cycle has appeared. Hmm? And so, what happens is that uh, you, if you start here, you continue to stay in this. Uh, Fixed point at the certain point, it jumps to already large uh, form the uh, limit cycle. Instead of having a limit cycle that start growing when the fixed point loses stability, you go to the, <coughs> the fixed point, uh, you stay there, and suddenly it, the other uh, appears. This happens, for instance, uh, when you have a, a, the, um, a sound apparatus. And you are increasing the volume mm -hmm. without, uh, so because uh, you are in a concert, you want to have uh, louder noise. At a certain point, uh, they, it may happen that the apparatus start uh, having a feedback uh, and start having no? suddenly, not, not uh, simply when starting when you turn the knob and increases, increases, increases. No, you turn the knob and nothing happens. At this point, it's like, yeah, you have to come back a lot now in order to stop uh, the system. It's very similar to this because yeah, you have oscillations that start suddenly when you, you still were in the stable fixed point before. Now, so the idea is this one instead of having this curve that becomes like this, you have uh, this curve that goes like this. So you see, essentially, this is a subtle node bifurcation. For the radial part, no? a couple of uh, points appear from nothing, but it still continues rotating no? because of this. And so you have uh, this kind uh, of bifurcation. And uh, okay, then there are a lot of examples that I'm not going to, to follow here, but it is quite a common. Uh, <coughs> Uh, bifurcation for instance in electronic devices so now let's see quickly what happens uh, if the bifurcation happens on the 
uh, on the angular part instead of the radial one. Because up to now we have studied what happened bifurcations in this equation. Now it can happen bifurcation in this equation. No? And in this case, for instance, uh, we have uh, a motion like that of the, of the pendulum, which is slow in some part and fast in another. Now, up to now we have considered the a system that are the, the same velocity essentially. Now so you see that uh, when this goes uh, near uh, one, you, you may have some values of theta in which this goes to zero. No, sinus uh, is between minus one and one. So if uh, this is uh, large, you have a turning, uh, no, maybe some, some pieces low. Some, some parts are fast, but you have essentially the same turning. It is like the pendulum when it's turning like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you decrease the measure, you have a, a critical value mu equal to 1, at which at a certain point, uh, here tends to stop. It's like the pendulum that stays uh, here, does not know if going from one side or from another. So now that you have a uh, this kind of information. First, you just turn uh, like in the standard limit cycle. At a certain point, you may have a, a, a subtle node bifurcation, but uh, in the angular part. And here you see a couple of, uh, of uh, fixed point appears. And so you <coughs> go either this, this way or this way. Hmm? But, so a, a limit cycle converts into a stable fixed point and then a stable one. And there are a lot of examples also of this. And finally, on clinical bifurcation, which I do not uh, go into the term because it is uh, too complex. OK. Up to now, we have seen uh, what happens in two directions, in two dimensions. But from the point of view of analyzing, for instance, the data series that you can obtain, you may have the phenomenon of quasi-periodicity. I mean, up, when the system is periodic, you have a trajectory that follows a, a cycle. So you see, okay, easy because I just have to follow the trajectory. If it comes back to the same point, it is periodic. But suppose now that you have two uncommensurate frequencies, and the motion is simply given by a linear equation with two uncommensurate frequencies. The fact is that the period of emotion, in this case, is the mean common uh, multiplier of these two. But if, if they are commensurate, there is no common uh, mm, <laughs> multiple no? uh, or divisor, I uh, So essentially, instead of uh, clearly the two are periodic, so I can represent them in a square, and uh, for instance, this is a periodic motion. But, uh, if they are, the two are not commensurate, actually the motion never repeats exactly the same. And so, it's like in the Lissajou figure, it can fill all your space. So the motion qualitatively is periodic, because it is given by the superposition of two periodic motion. But you don't see simple periodicity just by looking at the chapter. No? Because, for instance, here are examples. If you have two Frequencies 1, 1, essentially you have a circle. So let's see. 4 and 3, you have something more complex like this. 13, 14, you say more complex. But if you start putting a, a, no, a non uh, say, irrational numbers, you start see filling whole regions of space, even all the space. No? So it is not the very simple to discriminate <coughs> uh, quasi periodicity quasi -periodic from chaos. Mm. And so now let's skip to chaos. You can realize uh, a chaotic system uh, by yourself. For instance, uh, this is uh, a chaotic system. Uh, it is just uh, a bicycle will with uh, some uh, say glasses here with a, a hole and a, a jet of water here so clearly if uh, the hole the hole here is too big they simply 
fill and then empty in the, while they are turning, so it continues turning in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Hmm? But if uh, the flux of water is uh, large enough, uh, it starts uh, filling, the, 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 the glasses cannot uh, just empty in a single third. <coughs> so at a certain point, uh, you see that this starts uh, going in the opposite direction. Uh, like this, because they, have, they were not uh, able to <laughs> empty now uh, completely, and so it uh, goes like this. And uh, if you analyze the data, you find something like this. So actually, you don't see any periodicity. Okay, you see that uh, locally it is almost, it has a period of times in which it is almost periodic. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, these uh, periods of time do uh, not repeat uh, uh, regularly. Hmm. And uh, this is uh, similar to what happened to Lawrence when he was studying uh, a convection problem uh, and uh, with this, this kind of equation. These are the equation of the Lawrence model. And uh, these are the equations <coughs> you can uh, write for the problem before of the, of the well. And you see that uh, clearly you have to renormalize a constant. Uh, you see that both are almost linear, they only have some quadratic uh, coupling among the variables, uh, like uh, here, omega x, uh, omega y. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, you can study, Lawrence uh, did uh, the study of this model, uh, for what uh, he was able to do with uh, uh, paper and pencil. Remember, we are in the 73. No, 63. So, computers were not so common as uh, today. So, he discovered that uh, there was a, a kind of hope bifurcation, but actually, the, the limit uh, cycle disappeared before the fixed point uh, loses its stability. So, instead of a uh, thing being there, it, it was not present. And uh, then, no other known attractor was present there after this, the fixed point that loses the stability. Fixed point means a zero, 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 because here, if you put everything zero here, it is a, it is a fixed point. No? Zero, zero goes zero, 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 zero goes zero, 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 zero means zero, and so on. It is a fixed point, but it may be stable or unstable. Okay, so we found this kind of uh, behavior. So, no, actually, it was a yeah, there was a fixed point, a, a pitch for bifurcation with two different uh, uh, fixed points. Then they disappeared here. He found an unstable cycle, but unstable <laughs> is nothing. And so he was uh, not able to say what happened here. Because no known uh, attractors were present. Then, okay, since uh, in the 60s there were, there were computers, he went to the computer room asking for time for performing computation. It means not having a screen, but using cards and then plotting the points by paper and pencil and so on. And so he found something like, he said, the red, one, the red line. No? Very similar to what we have seen for the chaotic water wheel. Okay, so he suppose that he performed the simulation up to here. Hmm? And you say, okay, maybe it is a periodic motion with a very, very long period. <coughs> so let's go perform other simulations. But in order to check that everything went uh, well, instead of uh, putting the numbers, remember, he had to plot this by hand eh, using the, the, the paper that uh, the printer uh, was printing. Instead of putting the coordinates of the last point that he simulates, he put uh, the points of a, a small time before, not to be sure that uh, the trajectory was uh, still the same. And he discovered that uh, actually the computation at a certain point <coughs> went uh, on a completely different trajectory. <coughs> Instead of following the trajectory as before, a, a different trajectory appeared. And this was uh, rather puzzling because uh, the equation are deterministic. So once you start from a single point, you should follow the same trajectory. So clearly, he first thought that uh, the computer was not working, 
as before now, you went to the computer file and say, hey, your computer is not working, look at that. Then. So, no, the algorithm was good. What happened is that they actually realized that the digits printed by the printers were not exactly the numbers inside the computer, they were together. So it has a very, very error, very small error, made when you put the, the initial number. So here I the same simulation, starting with two numbers that, were, that are different, something like 10 to the minus 9. And actually you don't see anything up to a certain time where they start being completely different, completely. not completely, because they are still limited in the same region. Mm -hmm. the, the statistic behavior of the two are the same, but the actual trajectory is completely different. Hmm? <coughs> okay, then uh, this is uh, what is called the butterfly effect. I mean, huh? when you have a chaotic uh, motion, even a small perturbation of the initial configuration can propagate to the whole system. And uh, here there is an animation that shows uh, this effect. So you have two chaotic uh, water wheels. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't know why this has been mirrored, because actually you have... They should be the same. There is just a small uh, difference in the two in the initial position. I can show you again. So, you see, this is, uh, this starts yeah. here, and this starts slightly <coughs> on the opposite side. But actually this is a problem because they, you see here, they put one of them mirrored because <laughs> this is going here and this is going here, and this has the true in this side and this has the true in the opposite side. So actually you should turn one of them left to right. No. It is not very important because, uh, uh, so you see, they, sh they should have the same behavior that when they look like in the mirror, as if it were a mirror here. Huh? Okay, and uh, oh, no, why they behave so? So you see that they behave the same for a certain time, huh? and uh, after after some time they start. Uh, uh, behaving differently for the moment, for the moment they are the same, and now you have the, the separation of the two. <coughs> one is turning uh, one direction, <coughs> and the other is turning uh, in the opposite direction. <coughs> then they can uh, rejoin again, and so on and so on. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> if you put, if you put, if you plot. Uh, the trajectory, you see this kind of figure appearing. Here is the unstable fixed point. It starts near this, it leaves the unstable fixed point, and then start turning like this. You can recognize here and here there are the old spiraling fixed point that we have seen before. You remember that. Uh, Lawrence was able to arrive just to here. He found an unstable fixed point. A stable fixed point that becomes unstable in the origin. Two stable fixed points spiraling that become unstable here. And then, so after that, there was this. These are the two unstable spiraling fixed points in the center of these two wings. But the trajectory are not uh, neither periodic nor quasi-periodic, they are a new, a new behavior, a new attractor, they are chaotic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this, for instance, is a simulation, I don't know if uh, with this light you can see anything, now so we skip, but you have the... And the idea is that now you have divergence of trajectories, so I mean, if you make a small error, it is uh, it amplifies, and uh, so you, since it amplifies uh, <coughs> exponentially, at least uh, in the linear approximation, you can do the same in linear approximation as uh, before. But while uh, in the previous case you you made the linear approximation near a fixed point, uh, 
Now you have to make the linear approximation following a trajectory. Because a trajectory is not just a point, it's not just a size, but it's something com complex. So you, you have to follow a trajectory to make a difference. And then follow the difference how it amplifies along the trajectory. But as usual, in the linear approximation, the amplification is exponential. Not because when you make a linear equation, it, is, it gives you an exponential amplification. So you define <coughs> what is called the, the Lyapunov of exponent. So this is a linear approximation. But instead of having a derivative just computed in one point, you have to consider that this derivative is taken all along the trajectory. So actually, sometimes it may be contracting, sometimes it may be expanding. You're interested in the average behavior. Mm -hmm. The trajectory sometimes, remember the, what I taught before here. The two trajectory sometimes separates, sometimes and comes back to be closer. Not, not, don't look at this because we are in the linear approximation. But sometimes they diverge, sometimes they converge, even though they are near one to the other. <coughs> so, you have to make a, some more complex computation because sometimes <coughs> the trajectories diverge at a rate at a larger and a smaller rate, but you are interested in the, in the average behavior. And you define the Lyapunov of exponents, exponent. And uh, clearly, now you can reinterpret what we, have, we already knew about the fixed point uh, lead cycle in terms of uh, Lyapunov exponents. And since uh, we are not in one dimension, we have several Lyapunov exponents, the same as the dimensional space. So what happens for a fixed point? Well, a fixed point means that whatever the initial difference, it goes to zero. It means all Lyapunov exponents are less than zero. Mm -hmm. While for a limit cycle, clearly if you start in the direction perpendicular, locally perpendicular to the limit cycle, the trajectory goes to zero. So one exponent is negative. But if you start with two, two initial positions along the limit cycle, they more or less remain at the same distance. So if the cycle has one zero exponent and one negative exponent, or if in more dimensions, one zero exponent and all others negative exponents. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, the interesting point is that what happens if I have more complex uh, cycles? For instance, quasi-periodic cycles. You remember, quasi-periodic means you have two uncommensurate uh, frequencies. Here you need a, a larger space, so for instance, a three dimensional space, and you may have a, a motion on a torus, in which case you can have two stable cycles, and the torus is, is contracting, so it stays there, but you may have no periodic motion because the trajectories can turn around the torus and never come back to the exactly the same point. But actually, now you have. Uh, that uh, yeah, this is in three dimensions, so you have three different <coughs> exponents. One is for sure contracting because for whichever point you, you start, you go to the torus. And now you have two zero Lyapunov exponents because you can separate, uh, say, in this direction or in this direction along the torus, and they more or less remain at the same distance. Sometimes they go, they go, or they become closer. Sometimes they they expand, but in average they stay at the same distance because it is quasi periodic. No? <coughs> you can start with a difference here or a difference in this direction, here or this direction or in this direction, and then they continue to stay at the same distance. So you have two zero Lyapunov of exponents. So you, uh, you may solve the problem of quasi periodicity. Say, okay, but the periodic is not exactly periodic, periodic is just one, yeah, zero Lyapunov exponent, but it is uh, something similar to two zero Lyapunov exponent. And uh, finally, <coughs> let's come back to the Lyapunov uh, spectrum of the Lorentz system. What do you expect? Okay, 
This Lelyakonov system is essentially almost two-dimensional. This is like a wings of a, of a butterfly. Mm -hmm. Not the essentially one, almost two-dimensional. So, okay. So, for sure you have a very large negative exponents that makes that out every initial condition goes to this uh, attractor. Mm -hmm. no? So, if you have a separation in the direction perpendicular to these uh, wings, uh, it, is, uh, it goes to zero very quickly. <coughs> no? So, the important point uh, for having an attractor is that the sum of all the upper exponent uh, is less than zero, because it has to contract uh, all initial conditions on the attractor. If you, <coughs> if you take two initial conditions along the same trajectory, they cannot uh, scream, no? because the trajectory is deterministic. So you, you cannot have uh, two points that are going to zero. Say so they essentially remain at the same distance along the attractor. So for sure there is a, a zero Lyapunov of exponent. But now, if you make a separation perpendicular to these trajectories, it goes amplified because sometimes one stays here and sometimes the other goes in the other wing. So you have for sure a, a positive Lyapunov exponent. So chaos is related to the appearance of a positive Lyapunov exponent. Uh, and then uh, you may have also other characteristic, interesting characteristic. For instance, the fact that, uh, but I, I skip all this because you are already tired, that the you may ask, what is the dimension of this attractor? Clearly, it is not three, because it has a lot of empty space. <laughs> no, it is, clearly, it is almost two, but cannot be two, because in two dimensions, you cannot have divergence of trajectory. If you try to, to, to draw a trajectory on your sheet of paper, either it spirals to a zero, to a point, or goes in a cycle because in two dimensions you cannot avoid encountering uh, again your trajectory. No? It is a deterministic system. <coughs> so you cannot have a crossing of two trajectories. Because from one point you go in just one direction. So it has to be slightly larger than two. So something between two and three. And you have to define the fractal dimension for uh, giving a uh, meaning to this, uh, to this number. And there are several ways of doing it, which are quickly described here. And uh, actually, <coughs> if you look at the computation, you find that the fractal dimension of the Lorentz attractor is 2.05, which is a uh, sound, because it is slightly larger than 2. It cannot be 2, but it is slightly larger than 2. It means that uh, it has a, a depth, but a very, very small <coughs> depth. And, uh, okay, just finishing, uh, clearly in, in the 70s a lot of uh, studies has been done on this kind of system. The problem is that uh, for having chaos you need at least three dimensions. And it is a very hard thing to visualize a three-dimensional system. Now, yes, we have computers uh, and so on, but in the 70s, no. So, uh, Poincaré already studied this, uh, say, some 50 years before, and uh, he proposed to use uh, a section, I mean, just to plot the points where the trajectory intersects, a, for example, for instance, a plane. In this case, a, a three-dimensional system becomes a two-dimensional system that can be visualized more easily. Or another possibility is to take uh, a stroboscopic view of your tra trajectory. So, compute only the trajectory at a certain point, a certain time. Mm -hmm. So, clearly, limit cycles become points in this point carry section, uh, because all, you only count when the cycle encounters your plane. So, instead of having a limit cycle, you just have a point. No? And so clearly, not so easy to see if uh, you have a very long period or you have something different. If you have quasi periodicity, remember the torus, you have now something like this. This is a, the cut of a torus <coughs> by a plane. 
Now, so sometimes it is, you find something like this. Okay, it is a, a, a limit cycle with a very long period, so a lot of intersection with your section or a quasi-periodic motion that I have not uh, followed long enough. Okay, but uh, in, in, in any case, these and these are periodic motion, of course, a periodic one. While uh, here you find something that for low observation looks uh, similar to periodic motion, but if you follow this trajectory long enough, you see that it has a, a certain depth, it is not just uh, a line. Because uh, clearly, since this has a as dimension 2.5, this, which is a cut, has a dimension 1.5, so it is a, almost a line, but uh, with a certain depth. And clearly, now, if you, this, this is built uh, no, by putting a point here, then you wait and you have a point here, then you have a point here, then you have a point here. So essentially, it is a, a map, one point maps to another point and so on. And so clearly, people, since it is almost impossible to obtain this analytically starting from the equation of motion, people start to say, okay, let's study maps directly. So let's suppose we have a certain map, and let's study its property, as we did for the logistic map. So they started studying this succession of... Uh, points are given by some function, as we did for the logistic map. And then, uh, you, we already did it in the previous uh, mm. lesson, you can uh, again find that maps has a fixed, fixed point mm, that can be either exponentially converging or spiraling. The advantage of maps is that you can have <coughs> all of this in one dimension instead of going to two and then to three dimension. You, have a, you may have a very, very complex behavior in just one dimension. So they, they were preferred by people for, uh, for computers in the 70s. And uh, so you may, again, make the linear approximation of the fixed point to, in order to compute the stability. And again, you find the, the conclusion that you can get by paper and pencil by yourself if you want. So here yeah, you see here now, if you have an intersection with the bisectrix, uh, which is uh, with a, a derivative less than one, uh, the point is uh, 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 attracting, otherwise it's diverging. If it is negative, you have a spiraling point attracting or diverging, and so you, have, you may have uh, all the classification of x point. You may have uh, cycles, and you, you may recognize that for maps, cycles are just the fixed point of the second iterative of the, of the map, no, because it has period two. So if you take two times, you, you come back to the original point. So actually, no, cycles are nothing bad, but a fixed point of the iterated map. So, you may, you may find them uh, by paper and pencil, but clearly the complexity of this becomes increases and increases and increases, but you can do this. For instance, uh, uh, May, I don't remember who, started the logistic map, I was able to find that, uh, that all this bifurcation follow a, a law, simple, quite a simple law. And, uh, okay, so here you can apply this uh, logistic map, uh, the period doubling of the logistic map is essentially a hop bifurcation. I mean, a fixed point that becomes a cycle. Mm -hmm. So it is a hop, hop bifurcation. No, so you have this kind of, this is the fixed point that becomes unstable, and another one appears. It is like a, a transcritic hop bifurcation. You can suppose that there, is a, there was a, an unstable fixed point coming from here that collides with this exchange stability. And then uh, you have this kind of hop bifurcation, which is similar to the, trans the pitchfork bifurcation, but remember this is a cycle, not a couple of stable points. 
But if you go to the second iterative of the map, this becomes actually a pitchfork bifurcation. Because in the second iterative, these are two stable fixed points, not a cycle. So you see the similarities between uh, hop and pitchfork bifurcations. And. Uh, what do you mean? Sorry. Yeah. One plus. Uh, ah, one. this is the accumulation of bifurcation points. Eh? It was uh, it's possible to show that. Uh, the first, the, the first, the second, the third, and so on accumulates up to this point. And at this point, you have a transition to chaos. I mean, now the, the bifurcation becomes, uh, uh, so the interval between one bifurcation and the other becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And the ends so here, you have the appearance of chaos. Huh? And, uh, but remember that uh, even though, for instance, here you have chaos, uh, still uh, you have a periodic motion, although irregular. Uh, because uh, you still have, say, this is, uh, you see, period uh, 2, that becomes period 4. But period 4 means that you have first an oscillation, and then a second oscillation inside the first, the first oscillation. Then you have period 8, which is a, a third oscillation inside the second oscillation inside the first oscillation. So then you have chaos, but still you have uh, the period 2 here. Tom, 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 tom. No? You mean it is a, now a period, a regular period 2, but still uh, the trajectory jumps from this branch to this branch and then again to this branch and so on. Up to here, where you have the merging of the two, and then here you have a real chaos without uh, so this structure. And, uh, okay, then there are other things. And uh, you can do the Yakunov exponent analysis of a logistic map. But clearly, it only has one exponent, it is one dimension. <laughs> this is the Yakunov exponent, this is the bifurcation of the logistic map. And you can recognize, uh, for instance, the bifurcations corresponds to a of response that goes to zero. Okay. This is a stable attractors. Stable means a stable fixed point. Means a of response that going to zero. Mm -hmm. uh, less than zero. Okay. A bifurcation means that uh, the trajectory does not know exactly if it have to follow a fixed point or start oscillating, for instance. No? So the space is locally flat. Eh? It means that uh, any deviation stays for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so it is reflected by the fact that the Yakunov exponent uh, is uh, zero. Then you have, a, again, stable fixed point here, and uh, Yakunov exponent less than zero. Then another bifurcation here, etc. When chaos appears, the Yakunov exponent becomes uh, greater than zero. But when the periodic windows appears, the Yakunov exponent comes back to zero. These points here is when the, um, the convergence is, is uh, faster, here, yeah, because the Yakunov exponent is the uh, smallest. And it marks the transition from going to a point in this way or going to a point oscillating. No? It is like if you study the dump and the pendulum, okay, so pendulum with the, um, some dumping, there is a transition where the pendulum goes to zero like this, and a transition where the pendulum goes to zero in an over dump the motion. And they, in physics, we study this because uh, there is a, the, the values of the parameters for which you, you go from this to this uh, is the preferred one because it, when it goes uh, faster to the equilibrium point. Uh, mm? So the, the fastest way of going to the equilibrium point uh, is the intermediate between going oscillating uh, and going exponentially down. Uh, and this corresponds to the lowest value of the Yakunov exponent. And, uh, okay, so, 
you, I don't know if we, we can see this uh, the fascinating video which uh, I don't know you, we see the same similar structure of the of the yeah, no, of the logistic map. Now it, it is a zooming and you see that in no, you see uh, the periodic windows. Uh, you see that inside the periodic windows you again you have again a bifurcation diagram hmm? here. You see the bifurcation diagram, and then you see that uh, if you increase the resolution, all bifurcations reappear again and again and again because it has a fractal. You gain, you see again the periodic windows, and then again the bifurcations, and then uh, you can continue to zoom, and you see okay another periodic window, another bifurcation, another period doubling bifurcation, and then you will continue. Increasing the resolution, okay, it means uh, making simulation longer and longer and longer and longer. And you see that uh, it never ends. Until it never ends. Self similarity. Yes, exactly. It is, uh, <coughs> the, the fact that it, actually this is a fractal, so it, uh, it is uh, self similar and so on. Mm -hmm. And so here okay, you can uh, compute uh, <coughs> the fractal dimension of the logistic map. Uh, and uh, you see that uh, a, it is uh, not uh, a point and either a full space, it is something between. Okay, that's the end of the second lesson. Yes. Thank you very much.